On saying these things, he went out with his disciples across the ravine of cedars to a place where there was a garden, and he went into it with his disciples. Now Judas, too, who betrayed him, knew the spot, because Jesus had often met with his disciples there. So Judas got together the Roman garrison and some attendants from the high priests and Pharisees and went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, as he knew everything that was going to befall him, came forward and asked them, Who is it that you are looking for? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. He said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, was standing among them. So when he said to them, I am he, they took a lurch backward and fell to the ground. So once more he asked them, Who is it that you are looking for? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have already told you that I am he. So if you are really looking for me, let these men go. He said this, that the statement he had just made might be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those whom you have given me. So Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Then Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into the sheath. Must I not drink the cup which the Father has handed me? So the garrison and its commander and the attendants of the Jews arrested Jesus and put handcuffs on him and took him first to Annas for he was father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it was for their welfare that one should die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed on after Jesus, and that other disciple was acquainted with the high priest, and so went on with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter stood outside before the door. So this other disciple, who was acquainted with the high priest, stepped out and spoke to the woman doorkeeper and brought Peter in. Then the servant girl at the door said to Peter, You too are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He answered, No, I am not. Because it was cold, the slaves and attendants had made a charcoal fire and were standing about it warming themselves. So Peter too was standing among them warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teachings. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews are in the habit of meeting, and I have not spoken anything in secret. So why are you questioning me? Ask those who heard what I told them. Of course they know what I said. After he had said this, one of the attendants standing by slapped Jesus in the face and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have said anything wrong, on oath tell what it is. But if what I have said is true, why do you slap me? So Annas sent him over, still in handcuffs, to Caiaphas the high priest. But Simon Peter still stood warming himself, so they said to him, You too are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, No, I am not. One of the high priest's slaves, who was a kinsman of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Then Peter again denied it, and at that moment a cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to the governor's palace. It was early in the morning, and they would not go into the governor's palace themselves in order not to be defiled, so as to be unfit to eat the Passover supper. So Pilate came outside and asked, What is the charge you bring against this man? They retorted, If he were not a criminal, we would not have turned him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and try him in accordance with your own law. Then the Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to execute the death penalty on anyone. This made it possible for the word of Jesus to be fulfilled, which he spoke to indicate what sort of death he was to die. So Pilate went back into the governor's palace and called Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Do you ask me this on your own initiative, or have others suggested it to you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own people and their high priests have turned you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would have been fighting to keep me from being turned over to the Jews. But as a matter of fact, my kingdom does not come from such a source. 
Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king then? Jesus answered, Certainly I am a king. For this very purpose I was born. For this very purpose I have come into the world, to testify for truth. Everybody who is a friend of truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? On saying this, he went outside again to the Jews and said to them, As far as I can see, I can find no ground for a charge against him. Now you have a custom to have me set one man free at your Passover time. So do you wish me to set the king of the Jews free? Then they all shouted back, No, not him, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. So then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers made a crown out of thorns and put it on his head and put a purple coat on him and kept marching up to him and saying, All hail, you king of the Jews, each one slapping him on the face. And Pilate went outside again and said to the Jews, Listen, I am going to bring him out to you, for you to see that I can find no ground for a charge against him. So Jesus came outside, still wearing the crown of thorns and the purple coat. Then Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the high priests and attendants saw him, they shouted, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I can find no ground for a charge against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and in accordance with that law he deserves to die for claiming to be God's son. As soon as Pilate heard that, he was more awe-stricken than before, and went back into the governor's palace and asked Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have it in my power to set you free or to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power at all over me if it had not been given to you from above. So the man who betrayed me to you is more guilty than you. Because of this, Pilate kept on trying to set him free, but the Jews shouted, If you set him free, you are no friend to the emperor. Anyone who claims to be a king is uttering treason against the emperor. On hearing this, Pilate had Jesus brought out and had him sit on the judge's bench at the place called the Stone Platform, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Then Pilate said to the Jews, There is your king. But they shouted, Kill him, kill him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Must I crucify your king? The high priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. So Pilate then turned him over to them to be crucified. Then they took Jesus, and he went out carrying the cross by himself to a spot called the Place of the Skull or in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, with two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a placard written and had it put over the cross, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this placard because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the high priests of the Jews said to Pilate, You must not write, the king of the Jews, but write, he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier, except the coat, which was without a seam, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but let us draw for it to see who gets it. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, they divide my clothes among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Now this was what the soldiers did. Near Jesus' cross were standing his mother and her sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. So Jesus, on seeing his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, said to his mother, There is your son. Then he said to his disciple, There is your mother. And from that very hour, his disciple took her to his own home. After this, as Jesus knew that everything was now finished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I am thirsty. A bowl full of sour wine was sitting there. So they put a sponge soaked in sour wine on a stick and put it to his lips. As soon as Jesus took the sour wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. 
as it was the day of preparation for the Passover, that the bodies might not remain on the crosses during the Sabbath. For that Sabbath was a very important one. The Jews requested Pilate to have their legs broken and their bodies taken down. So the soldiers went and broke the legs of the first man and of the other one who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, as they saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers thrust a lance into his side, and blood and water at once flowed out. The man who saw it has testified to it, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, in order that you too may come to believe it. For this took place that this scripture might be fulfilled, not a bone of his will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look at him whom they pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked permission of Pilate to remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate granted it. So he went and removed his body. Now Nicodemus also, who had formerly come to Jesus at night, went and took a mixture of myrrh and aloes that weighed about 100 pounds. So they took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in bandages with the spices in accordance with the Jewish custom of preparing a body for burial. There was a garden at the place where Jesus had been crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because it was the Jewish preparation day and because the tomb was nearby, they laid him there. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Mary of Magdala went to the tomb, and she saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran away and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, whom Jesus tenderly loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple left the city and started for the tomb, and they both kept running. But the other disciple outran Peter and got to the tomb first, and he stooped down and peered in and saw the bandages lying on the ground, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came running up behind him, and he went inside and saw the bandages lying on the ground. But the handkerchief which had been over his face was not lying with the bandages, but was folded up by itself in another place. So then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, went inside and saw and he came to believe it, for they had not previously understood the scripture which said that he must rise from the dead. So the disciples went home again. But Mary stood just outside the tomb and kept weeping. So as she was weeping, she stooped down and peered into the tomb and saw seated there two angels in white robes, one at the head and one at the feet where Jesus' body had lain. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have put him. On saying this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Because she supposed it was the gardener, she said to him, If it was you, sir, who carried him away, tell me where you put him, and I will remove him. Jesus said to her, Mary. At once she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbi, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me so, for I have not yet gone up to my father, but go to my brothers and tell them that I am going up to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary of Magdala went and announced to the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had told her this. In the evening of that same first day of the week, even with the doors of the room bolted where the disciples had met for fear of the Jews, Jesus went in and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. On saying this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were thrilled with joy over seeing their Lord. Jesus again said to them, Peace be with you. Just as my Father has sent me forth, so I am now sending you. On saying this, he breathed upon them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you get forgiveness for people's sins, they are forgiven them. If you let people's sins fasten upon them, they will remain fastened upon them. Now Thomas, one of the twelve who was called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came in. So the rest of the disciples kept saying to him, We have seen the Lord. 
But he said to them, Unless I see the nail prints in his hands, and put my finger into them, and put my hand into his side, I will never believe it. Just a week later, the disciples were in the room again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were bolted, Jesus came in and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands, and take your hand and put it in my side, and stop being an unbeliever, but be a believer. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Is it because you have seen me, Thomas, that you believe? Blessed be those who believe, even though they have not seen me. Now there are many other wonder works which Jesus performed in the disciples' presence which are not recorded in this book. But these have been recorded in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life as bearers of his name. After this, Jesus again showed himself to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and this is the way he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples of Jesus were all together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We are going with you too. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Now just as day was breaking, Jesus took his stand on the shore, though the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to them, Lads, you have no fish, have you? They answered, No. Then he said to them, Set your net on the right side of the boat, and you will catch them. They did so, and they could not drag it in for the big catch of fish. So that disciple whom Jesus used to love tenderly said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he belted on his fisherman's coat, for he had taken it off, and plunged into the sea. The rest of the disciples followed in the little boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging in the net full of fish. When they landed, they saw a charcoal fire all made, and a fish lying on it, also some bread. Jesus said to them, Fetch some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter got into the boat and pulled the net ashore, full of big fish, a hundred and fifty-three. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus went and took the bread and gave it to them, and the fish too. This was now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples, after he had risen from the dead. After they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, are you more devoted to me than you are to these things? Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I tenderly love you. Jesus said to him, Then feed my lambs. Jesus again said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, are you really devoted to me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I tenderly love you. Jesus said to him, Then be a shepherd to my sheep. For the third time Jesus asked him, Simon, son of John, do you really tenderly love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus the third time asked him, Do you really tenderly love me? So he answered him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I do tenderly love you. Jesus said to him, Then feed my sheep. I most solemnly say to you, When you were young, you used to put on your own belt and go where you pleased. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will put a belt on you and you will go where you do not please to go. He said this to point out the sword of death by which Peter was to glorify God. So after he had said this, he said to Peter, Keep on following me. Peter turned and saw following them the disciple whom Jesus specially loved, who at the supper leaned back upon Jesus' breast and asked, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? So when Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, But Lord, what about him? Jesus answered him, If I wish him to wait until I come, what is that to you? You must keep on following me. So the report got out among the brothers that this disciple was not going to die. But Jesus did not tell him that he was not going to die. He said only, If I wish him to wait until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down, and we know that his testimony is true. 
There are many other things that Jesus did, which if they were all written down in detail, I do not suppose that the world itself could hold the books that would have to be written.